All right, welcome to this week's edition of the bi-weekly update. Today, we're going to bring you the latest news and things that we have in our mind going on. There's quite a few different items when it comes to investments. It's also the day after Valentine's Day, so I hope you all had a wonderful Valentine's Day. Uh, the Bucks last night beat the, I guess, beat somewhat of the Celtics or the Celtics second team. So that was a big, uh, exciting event last night in our life. So that is my go big. I took the daughters and uh, uh, one of their friends to the Bucks game last night, and it was a wonderful game. And it started at 630, so it was early, so I could get home at bedtime. Uh, with that, how about uh, you, Ken? Yeah, thank you, Chris. Good morning, everybody. Great to be here with you as usual. Grateful for uh, my family. I'll keep, I'll keep it simple today. Keep my family, our wonderful Gentian team here. We have seriously one of the best teams um, that, I, that I think we do uh, have here. And I care for all of you guys. And also our great and generous clients that we do have. We, we truly have really nice people as clients. And I just, I'm just grateful for all that. I'm grateful for them. So, Outstanding. Thank you very much, Ken. I echo that. How about Michael? Thanks, Chris. I'll uh, I'll keep it complicated. Um, I t so grateful for my girlfriend Sabrina. You know, we made lobster mac last night and didn't burn down the apartment complex, so that was wonderful. Um, and then I, I just got to give a shout out to Ryan and Julie and everybody back in the office who uh, you know they're they're covering for me a little bit right now. I'm I'm doing some studying. Um, I have a test coming up because I'm a glutton for punishment and uh, another licensing exam. So we're going to keep it rolling. But thanks guys for covering me. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Michael. How about Ryan? How about yourself? Thanks, Chris. Uh, actually, I want to express a little gratitude for our newest team member, uh, Michael II. <laughs> um, we're still trying to figure out how we're going to differentiate between Mike and Michael, but uh, I, I appreciate Michael very much right now because he's bringing some really good questions and it helps us refocus on why it is we do what we do and how we do what we do. So just good reminders of, of everything that we're doing for you guys. Thank you very much, Ryan. I guess I should also bring that up as well. So Michael joins us from, uh, and I'm going to keep it ambiguous because we're going to have two Michaels. So you'll you'll figure out how to call them. We may go by last name, we may go by first name, we may go by nickname. But Michael comes to us with about five years of experience from uh, Charles Schwab. Wonderful new team member. He was introduced to us by Zach. Uh, you'll see more of him, but I do want to announce that he's here. It's great to have him as normal. We're getting him up to speed on who we are and how we operate, but he's got a wonderful mindset, wonderful background. And I think you'll all enjoy seeing him as a new member of the team as well coming up in the future weeks um, as we add a segment for him, which is Mike Two's minute. So I'm going to have to secede a little time. I'm just I'm just messing with you a little bit. But anyway, we want to welcome him to the team as well. Uh, so starting today, there's quite a few different topics we could talk about. We could talk about the recovery of January, um, kind of the so far, I guess, the doldrums of February, which is not a whole lot of um, upside, if you will, but not a whole lot of downside. Either. There's some surprising earnings. Inflation has subsided in some areas, but it's also been pretty high. If you ever try to take a flight, I think you'll notice it as well. My wife's been on the internet trying to find things for this four-day President's Day weekend or for spring break, and she's appalled by the fact that we're approaching um, four figures for airfares because uh, flights are full and normal flights are costing about 25% more just on a, on a regular basis. So airlines should most likely be profitable, is my guess, on a, on a present basis. We'll find that out when they report earnings as it's coming up, though, as well. So as a surprise inflation number yesterday, I think, was interesting. Also, the uh, 500,000 people that applied for, um, or that were, I think it was 500,000 new job openings, if you will, about a week and a half ago, was a, quite a surprise. So we've got a lot of interesting economic data here that's saying the economy is fairly strong. Yesterday or two days ago, people were a little bit um, skittish about the short term. Again, short term is interesting, but long term, it indicates a, a long term strong economy, which is what we'd like to see. You're also, I think, some notes today about China opening. So there's a lot of interesting things going on, if you will, with the markets and economy. Again, a lot of these are the short term items and the short term data. What we really are looking for is a longer term trend, which is that things typically revert to a mean if they're well under. And maybe my topic today should be mean reversion. Mean reversion is essentially something where if historically something has a trend line that say 7% and it's been at negative one or one for five or six or seven years, typically that will revert to the mean. Mean reversion is when things get too low, they go back to normal. 
The same thing with mean reversion, though, if things are too high. Let's say the speculation on cryptocurrency, the speculation on small companies and their growth is going to be incredible in the future. Oh, but not yet. So if they get to be 20 times their normal growth, however, they're normally trading at seven times, they'll also revert to the mean. So one thing a lot of our managers will use is mean reversion in what they do. So we don't do market timing. We will see massive misplacements from time to time and our rebalancing takes care of those mean reversion as well. So a couple of things with that rebalancing, when things are low, it automatically buys more shares at a lower price when we rebalance. Second thing is when things are high, it sells shares of what did really well. So it's a forced sell high by low discipline. Sometimes it's nice to go back to the basics and talk about those. So I just wanted to bring up one topic called mean reversion today and how our portfolio typically tends to uh, work with those. Um, so in character, I normally will jump into a dad joke here or there. Um, I wanted to jump into one today because I got this wonderful 365 day calendar from Lisa of dad jokes. So last year, this, uh, I got a book from Zach, which you heard some wonderful uh, ones from here. This is February 10th. I say, I accidentally swallowed some food coloring. The doctor says I'm okay, but it feels like I'm dying inside. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty funny. I know. I didn't want to hear that one. I'll, I'll give you the one for today, though. I really wanted to, to share today's because it's, it's a bit corny. What did one toilet say to the other? You look a bit flushed. At any rate, these are good ones to share with your grandkids as well, if you'd like. So I'll give you some ammunition. Anyway, uh, today what we're going to have is we're going to have uh, Mike's Minute, which is going to be about two minutes. We're going to have Ken's Corner, and we're going to have Ryan's Ramblings. Well, I say that because <laughs> Zach is out today. I usually have Zach's facts. I kind of joked about the Ryan's Ramblings, but I think it's kind of funny. So uh, maybe we'll call it Ryan's Musings. Your thought process sounds much better, Ryan. Anyway, let's start with Mike's Minute if we can. What's going on, Mike? Thanks, Chris. Um, you know, I'm I'm a little disappointed. I thought I gave you a layup with a, with a dad joke standing here next to a, a microphone and and being Mike. So you, you know. did. I was gonna say that next, but you ruined it already. So thank you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> par for the course, but or or uh, that is Mike too. It's Mike one and Mike two. They didn't really know. They there it seen is. Mike. This is the new team member. Here it is, yes. right here. Um, <laughs> but anyways, thanks, Chris. So yeah, no, you, you hit the nail right in the head, kind of talking about rebalancing and where things go and the long-term approach and the viewpoint to the market. Um, but we do like to talk about kind of where things are outperforming today in comparison to where they were yesteryear. So interestingly enough, to start this year, growth has continued to outperform and beat value. And specifically, large cap growth has been the best performer year to date, which is very interesting because within those specific equity sectors, large cap growth was actually the worst performer last year. So it just goes to show when you have the opportunity to sell something that's doing well, large cap value last year, buy something that's doing low, you don't know where that turnaround could be. And granted, this is, like I said, a long-term approach to everything. So we want to keep that in mind as we go forward. But it is fun to see some of these things come to fruition as we as we talk about them. Um, that being said, the market's year to date, S&P 500 is up about 7%. NASDAQ composite, those tech stocks, another one that was beaten down last year, up to 13.67% year to date. Russell 2000, those are going to be those small cap stocks, 9.33%. So, and then the discrepancy between growth and value, between large cap growth and large cap value, large cap growth is actually up 11% year to date, large cap value, 4.31. So you can see a little bit of performance there. Um, when we take a look at the international markets, developed international, up about 8% year to date and emerging markets just behind that, just over six. So it's been a good start to the year. You know, the market's trying to figure this out, price things in as it, as it does. Uh, what we're hearing from some of our, our mutual fund partners and those who we've had conversations with, and I was fortunate to actually speak with five of them alone last Friday, two more earlier this week, um, on top of everything else we've got going on. But, uh, you know, there's there's actually a case for growth to continue this, this outperformance, which is interesting. Typically in times of high inflation, growth companies have a hard time because they are reinvesting back in themselves. And sometimes it's difficult for them to be able to find funding at a low price when rates are up. So, but the headwinds that we faced last year, those are starting to deteriorate. And there's some more tailwinds on the horizon that can push this thing forward. And economically speaking, 
consumption hasn't been bad, although the individual consumer has been leveraging themselves a little bit with credit card debt going up and savings going down. They're still spending and still giving opportunity for these companies to be able to push their products and continue to grow going forward. Uh, the argu other argument is that innovation doesn't care about inflation. The, everybody's going to continue to innovate. And a lot of times in times like this, they're looking for a solution. And how do you find a solution? You innovate, you create, you build on what existed. You know, um, We just talked about chat, chat GPT. There's innovation that just came out in a peak excuse me, in a period that is looking like there's a potential recession on the horizon. Now, are we going to have one? We don't know, but just things to continue to consider. My final point I want to make is just kind of where these sectors are in inflation. Um, Chris touched on it a little bit earlier with airlines and, you know, my heart goes out to anybody who lives two lives in two separate states. <laughs> I'm very sympathetic to that. Uh, but, uh, I just wanted to go ahead and share my screen real quick. We got a little chart that just kind of illustrates what is the most inflationary, what isn't. And there's some interesting things on here that I just wanted to show. So just give me one moment here. All right, can you guys see my screen? Excellent, excellent. So this came out from Yahoo Finance. This kind of breaks down the inflation structures and where things are. As you can see, airfare is by far and away the highest inflationary driver over the last 12 months, being up 25.6% in comparison to what you could get an airline ticket 12 months ago. Lots of different reasons for this, um, You know, people being comfortable going out, different things like that. Um, rent, other things, food at home, pets and pets products household energy costs, these are really pushing things forward. Now, when we come down here, one that I thought was extremely interesting, college tuition. College tuition has been historically an inflationary, had put a lot of inflationary pressure on this. And, you know, historically, it could be anywhere from six to 8% per year. That's, we all have seen college costs go up. It's actually, actually holding pretty steady at 2.3 year over year. So just some different things to think about. Um, showing that new vehicle prices are at 5.8%. That was significantly more 12 months ago when you looked at the, the 12 months prior to that. And the most interesting, I would think, used car vehicles down 11.6%. So just a couple of things to think about. It's always changing. It just is how the world is going to continue to turn with discretionary spending and how people are going to put their money to work. So, all right. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate that as well. And Mike. So I want to talk to so both of you in the picture. So a couple of things that, as Michael mentioned, it's very interesting to look at the uh, small cap, the large growth as well for the month of January. What I like to say oftentimes is you have to be careful about being out of the market and trying to time it because January was a great year. So you start to look at those in perspective and it's interesting. You don't know what month that's going to be, how strong that will be. Will it run through the next month? Nobody knows those items. But a couple other items, too, is that I think retail sales were a surprise, up 3% last month. That was a huge surprise just announced today as well. So there's a lot of data and things that we see that just confirm or maybe they deny some of the different facts. People are talking about recession and others. So it seems like consumers, although you know everybody's talking about the recession word and has been for about 13 months, they're not acting that way. So very interesting to see. I just wanted to point that out. Thank you very much, Mike. Uh, with that, why don't I head over to uh, Ryan's section? I'm not going to name the last portion. I was going to call it ramblings, but I'm going to call it Ryan's section for now. Uh, Ryan, what do we need to know? That's, that's perfect. Uh, I like ramblings. And in, in that spirit, I have a couple different things coming from different sides that I, I'd, uh, I'd talk about. Perfect. Um, interesting webinars that I've been on recently, learning a little bit about government pension offset. So uh, really just looking at how that's calculated and who it might affect. Um, if you have a government pension, you or your spouse, something that you could ask about, it does affect a very small percentage of people, even of those people who have government pensions. So not likely that it's going to cause any great changes for you, but something worth asking about if it is uh, a part of your scenario. Um, another thing, sort of, again, random with the ramblings. I joined a new gym this month and they gave me a, a book to read that's called Average Sucks. So interesting title to really grab your attention, but it is uh, uh, found a really cool message in that it's not about comparing your average or your normal to other people, but rather about improving your own average, your own set point, and how really we are the only ones holding ourselves back from improving 
on that set point. So um, a, a very interesting point. And I thought it was a really cool thing to be, you know, my first day at a new gym and they had a, a cool gift like that for me to really work on self-improvement in and out of the gym while I was starting up there. Um, yeah, that's, that's what I've got for you today, Chris. Thank you. That wasn't much ramblings. Usually ramblings are longer. Well, here's what's interesting, though. Orion is just a plethora of information. Uh, information. Yesterday, he said uh, he gave me a word of dating advice, even though I've been married for 20 years. And I said, Ryan, what's that? He says, if you don't appreciate your free, if, if you know your girlfriend doesn't appreciate your freak jokes, you need to let that man go. Now, what's funny about that is he had it reversed. So I said, uh, that should probably be told to women. He so uh, anyway, it was funny. He was one of the rambling. Sometimes I have to correct him on those. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, I thought that was a pretty good one uh, for anybody who in your teen girls who are dating. I said, if he doesn't appreciate your food jokes, you need to let that man go. Anyway, so as we go through, I want to give this uh, one or two more pieces here um, before I uh, jump into Ken. But I think there's a couple of other pieces. Um, the SEC commissioner is actually talking about, we've talked a lot about cryptocurrencies last year, not much really this year, you just see the implosion. He's talking about crypto firms having to register. Now that is something that they do not want. Remember, DeFi, decentralized finance is what cryptocurrency is all about. So that's going to raise a massive, massive um, kind of stop sign right in the middle of a lot of these firms. But there's a lot of things going on. I'll touch on a few more here as we go through. Um, but I wanted to just touch on one of those pieces as well and kind of give you some of the different facts that we see during the week that are interesting as we go through. But without that, I want to, or after that, I say I want to bring in Ken. Ken, what do we need to look at for planning? I know there's been a lot going on with inheritance. We've had a lot of questions on it. We've put out a couple pieces. Uh, we've written a few pieces on it as well. But I know there's a lot going on with that. And then, uh, Ken, what's going on for Ken's Corner? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Chris. And you're absolutely right. So I'm going to touch on a couple topics today. Number one being pensions. Um, so, some of us have them, some of us don't. Uh, but when we do have a pension, we have to make some decisions. I'm going to talk about some of those pieces on, on how to kind of frame that in your mind a little bit on how to make a really great decision with your pension. And also, I'm going to talk about inheriting money or actually the other side is maybe preparing to leave an inheritance. So some of those moments uh, strike us at different times in our lives. Sometimes we're ready for those conversations. Sometimes we're not quite ready for those conversations. Uh, but when the time is right, it'll be some great, great conversations around that. So back to the first topic of pensions. Um, we, when you think about a pension, a pension is a monthly stream of income for the rest of your life. It could be over your lifetime, could be over a spouse's lifetime as well. Um, really, it comes down to a, a great base level of income, and we need to figure out which choices to choose. Um, when, you, when you talk about a pension, there's a couple different ways to think about it. There is a, uh, there's a single life pension, which basically goes over your own lifetime. And then when our journey ends, when your journey ends, then that pension goes away and there's no more income. And there's also another variation of that where it goes over your lifetime and also a spouse's lifetime as well. Um, so there's something to be considered there. there are, there's a lot of variations with those two um, that go into the calculations and decisions, but those are the two main ones that we see. The other one you'll hear about from time to time is called pension maximization. And that basically is taking basically the single life benefit, which typically is the highest benefit that you can receive from a pension and looking at what the difference would be between the survivorship benefit versus that single life benefit. There's usually a, a two, three, four hundred dollar difference there a month, if you will. And some say, maybe we'll take a look at life insurance with that difference. Maybe we can take the three hundred or four hundred dollars and buy some life insurance to try to make up that difference. So there are really three or four ways to do it. It really comes down to some questions about, you know, what is your overall retirement scenario look like? Are we trying to maximize income as much as possible? Are we trying to have a combination of income versus growing, trying to grow our assets over time? You know, what, what, what is the health of, what, what, what do we look like for health-wise, you know, between us? So there's, there's four or five different questions we need to ask ourselves to figure out, okay, which, which direction should we try to take with the pension? So something to think about there. The other topic is inheriting money or getting ready to leave an inheritance. Now, again, like I said, this is a pretty tender topic amongst families sometimes, um, this one strikes us at different times in our lives as well. Um, you know, it's kind of interesting when you're when you're about to inherit money. Typically, you've been a caregiver of some sort. Typically, now th that's a blanket statement. Some some of us are, some of them aren't. Um, but typically, you've been maybe caring for a parent or parents or someone that you love dearly, um, and you've given up a lot of your time, resources, and energy to do some of that. So, inheriting money can feel feel almost guilty at times. 
Um, it can feel rewarding at times. There's a lot of different emotions that go involved with inheriting or actually leaving an inheritance with somebody. So there's a lot of emotional factors to figure in there. Um, what we found out though, actually, uh, this is kind of funny. A client said, you know, this, this whole inheritance thing is interesting. Um, I'm just going to skip the whole inheritance thing and take up skiing. Skiing? I said, what do you mean by skiing? You haven't skied your whole life. You never talked about it with me. Spending the kid's inheritance. Skiing, S-K-I. Spending the kid's inheritance. Then we don't have to worry about any of this. <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. But uh, but if we do want to think about it and have family family conversations around this, you know, some families focus on the purpose of the money. You know, what what does this bucket of money mean for the family? How can we best utilize it in the community? How can we best utilize it within our, our amongst our own families? Um, some families focus on the taxes. You know, different different um, investments typically are inherited a certain way and sometimes leaving those assets are, are a certain way as well from a tax standpoint so something to consider as well we've seen families come closer together with an inheritance we've seen families completely ripped apart with an inheritance and you know our, our whole point here is just you know maybe if we can have some conversations around a family meeting if you will a family that prays together stays together you've heard that before maybe a family that plans together stays together as well and so you know what would it mean if we had family conversations about this would it change our outcome would it change the direction of what we're trying to accomplish would it take the unknown out of everything um, now these conversations come at different times in your life of course um, and, and some families have them, some family, families don't, and that's okay. Um, but just having those conversations, thinking about, thinking about that in your mind, if you will, um, from, from a tax standpoint, from a legal standpoint, all this stuff, you know, attorneys, we, we can help you out with all this stuff and how it works out, the details of it. But I think if we focus on the bigger picture of it all, I think that's a great place to start. And then we can fill in the details as we go. So with that being said, Chris, I'll, I'll hand it back to you. Thank you, Ken. Uh, Ken, we got a great client who just had a wonderful picture of a mandarin duck, which is rare to be here. Is that right? That is right. Yeah. One of our uh, great clients, great photographer, yeah. um, really travels around southeastern Wisconsin to try to find some of these amazing pictures and saw a mandarin duck. I think it was the South Shore Yacht Club. But I think it's been spotted. And she must have been camping out for a couple of days. Now maybe she maybe she pitched the tent. I don't know. But she got a, she got a picture of this mandarin duck. It's a beautiful mandarin duck right on the shoreline, if you will, standing in a, a little shallow water, beautiful colors, such a unique duck to see around this area. Hey, Ken, that brings up a question. Uh, maybe you want to ask her as well, but a question is, um, do birds know where they're going when they fly south for the winter, or the, do they just wing it? <laughs> I think they forgot to fly south for the winter because it seems like all the birds are staying around here. So, Well, with the mandarin duck being here, I thought it might be one of the, it might have been on that a spy balloon when we shot it down maybe it was part of the whole thing maybe it was ducks not to Chinese so anyway just thought I would add to that piece as well thank you Ken Bye. I totally appreciate that as well um, and what I would like to do today too is go through a couple other items I wanted to say you know there's remember the flight outages around um, Christmas there was a lot of issue with Southwest especially and a few others with massive amounts of people just flights being canceled and there's been a lot of talk around that with the FAA. So they're really talking about things they can do to prevent that just through the FAA, not just the airlines themselves by mandatorily making them update their software and a lot of the things that um, I'm sure there's going to be a congressional panel on it as well, because there's a congressional panel on everything, probably think catch up prices as well. I think that's a big one they're going to concentrate on, on Congress over the next month is what's happening to catch up prices. I'm joking. Heinz just talked about great earnings. So the inflation that's happened there has helped them, but then they gave um, a soft outlook. That makes sense. When you make catch up, I guess it probably is a soft outlook from there. At any rate, Apple also has a patent for a potentially foldable phone, which is a beautiful thing coming out. Um, rent is falling pretty massively in areas like um, Miami, a few that had really gotten hot before. So have home prices started to fall in some of those areas. So when it comes to real estate, we're seeing that. We're not seeing it so much here in the Midwest. Um, you're just seeing things sit a bit longer. A lot of the real estate agents we talk to here for our centers of influence have talked about things sitting longer, but prices not necessarily falling tremendously. They have fallen in Florida and other really hot areas, especially if you were on the west coast of Florida. Some of our real estate agents down there have said so, uh, but some of that's justified because you're not sure if the property you're looking at was underwater or not, or had water damage, and that's a big part of it too. Um, 
One hundred. One other item as well, which is pretty interesting of note of the last two years, 500,000 people have moved out of California. So they've had a net migration out of the state as well. A lot to bordering states and a lot to Texas as well. Also to um, Florida. Florida's become a haven for the rich. I read an article yesterday that showed that the ultra wealthy are just deciding to move to Florida for the weather. The, that's kind of a trend that's been happening for quite a while as well. So one thing that goes along with Ken's uh, discussion as well, as he was talking about inheritance, is one of the things that we say, it's called a term you'll want to hear, it's family wealth distribution planning. Now the question is, what is it? So family wealth distribution planning, we're going to coin it, we're going to trademark it so nobody can use it in the business. I'm kidding. But family wealth distribution is especially when it comes to planning, you might have assets, you might have different members of your family have different income levels. So family wealth distribution planning is about how to pass money to the next generation. Is it best for me to pay the taxes before my kids or whoever I'm going to give it to them receive it? Is it best to give my IRA to the kids or is it best to give IRAs to charity? Maybe I should pay the capital gains tax because I'm in the 15% or the 12% bracket or better yet, I'm in the 0% bracket and my kid who is a physician is doing way better than anyone else. Maybe they should not get my IRA. My, there's a whole lot of ramifications about this. And in some cases, there can be significant savings in tax. Not that you are going to avoid tax or let's call it a tax evasion because that's five years in the Graybar Hotel. We're talking about tax avoidance, minimizing the tax that you pay. So with family wealth distribution planning, it's something we've been doing a lot lately of the discussions of laying the, the foundations for it. But it takes some uh, some your input for us to understand who, where, why, and what's your intention. Not just you receiving it, but we've also done it upstream. So and not just you giving it, but also receiving it from parents. Um, a lot of parents are getting to be ages now where we've been to several funerals. That's actually where Zach is today. He's at the funeral of one of our uh, great clients' um, father who was he was helping with. So interesting to see that. We're seeing this more and more even about you receiving money, old annuities, old items that, uh, that somebody had, farms. How do I inherit these farms? So what happens to step up in basis? What are the errors? There's a lot of family wealth distribution planning that goes along with what Ken said. So that's a big portion we did want to discuss today. It's something you'll want to address, um, at least have in your mind. Okay, so as we go through, that's a, a big one as well. So thanks for bringing that up, Ken. Uh, what do we need to pay attention to as far as the happenings here? I'm not going to skip it this time, but I would like to say, what do we need to pay attention to happening here at Gentian? And I'm back, Chris. I know <laughs> you are, Ryan. Yep. I see you right there in the middle of the screen. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, as everybody I'm sure is well aware, yesterday was Valentine's Day. So we hope you got to spend some time with those you love or at least give a phone call to some of those that you care about. Um, today, obviously, thank you for joining on our bi-weekly update. And later on today, we have our February birthday club. So uh, whether you RSVP or not, please, you know, if you have a February birthday, come join us. We'll be celebrating uh, today at noon. The uh, office and the markets will be closed this upcoming Monday, February the 20th for President's Day. And then on the following day, Tuesday, February 21st, we will be celebrating our teammate Jenny's birthday. Wednesday, February 22nd, we will have limited office availability as we work on our team's growth and development. Uh, we'll get, of course, two emails and calls in some short breaks throughout the day, but um, if those matters are urgent, please uh, have some patience with us. Wednesday, March the 1st, will be our next Gentian bi-weekly update, so please join us again here on Zoom for that. And Sunday, March the 12th, I want to give you a heads up and a reminder that daylight savings time begins. So, hey, maybe we'll finally get some more sunshine around here in this state. You know, January, I think we had one day of sunshine. It was uh, quite interesting, but very welcome to have some more sun now in February. And then in March, uh, Wednesday, March 15th will be the March birthday club. So please check your emails and RSVP for that if you have a March birthday. Thanks, Chris. Awesome. Thank you very much, Ryan. I want to read you something. This is what we get all the time. This is something that comes from an analyst at Wells Fargo named Christopher Harvey. Um, and he's their equity analyst at uh, one of their equity analysts at, uh, at Wells Fargo. But here's what it says. The rally in risk has spurred early cyclicals and risk on. But valuations say this is neither 
March 20 or 2009, nor April 2020, the analyst said. So it took him to read data to realize that it's not 2009 or 2020. I just got to say, sometimes you look at these people and you're like, um, really? So anyway, I just looked at my calendar and it told me it's not 20, 2009 or 2020. So maybe we're just a little bit ahead of people in that. I just want to give you some of the stuff you see and read when you're looking at this catastrophist media as we go along. What I want to end with, for those of you who are in the forum with us, artificial intelligence is about the same introduction as electricity. Everybody's trying to beat everybody else up about it. Microsoft is trying to invest in it to outpace Google. Google's trying to outpace, you know, um, Meta. Anybody who has this open AI is the one that made chat.gpt. Uh, that a lot of people have been seeing and using and what I demonstrated on the on the picture, if you will, for our forum when I asked it several questions and I even made a, a tree logo or a tree marketing, uh, I guess a stump drilling marketing campaign, um, which had many people stumped. At any rate, as we go forward here, I wanted to read a poem. Uh, In this world of technology, AI is the king, a marvel of science, a wonderful thing. With algorithms and data, it learns and grows, a digital mind without limits or lows. It processes information with speed and might, a brain of computers day and night. It solves problems that once were tough, a new kind of genius that's always enough. But as we create it and teach to be, we must also wonder what it will see. Will it be our ally or will it be, or will it rebel? A future uncertain, only time will tell. So let us guide it with wisdom and care, for AI is the future beyond compare. A tool for good, a bridge to the stars, a force for change that will take us far. The poem was written by chat.gbt itself. So interesting to see this is what it says about itself when I asked it to write a poem. Interesting, this is the age. Uh, I had one client um, astoundingly recently just say that this could be the next thing for growth for the next uh, 10 or 12 years. Um, it was an interesting statement. And sometimes you forget as we go through seven years ago, we started talking about artificial intelligence and what it could do. And it's just now becoming something that's real. Your children, your grandchildren, you will all be in some way benefited by and probably hurt by this. There's a fine line, as Ken likes to say, between the good and the bad of this. We hope to push it toward the good, but we know there will be this line where some things will happen on the other side as well. Better weather prediction models? Maybe, maybe not. Um, you know, as we start to look at some stock prediction models, they'll predict a lot of stuff, but it doesn't mean it'll happen. This is what one of my great coaches, Dan Sullivan, said about artificial intelligence. It can 100% accurately predict what happened yesterday. Think about that. Yeah, it's a little head scratcher, right? It only takes the data of the past, can't predict the future. So with that, Chris is going to sign off today with still the fact that there are no unknowable future facts. We've always talked about that. So I'd like to say we're here at Gentian and Gentian Retirement. Thank you for your introductions. We're being introduced to some wonderful people, and that keeps our business you know, in, in wonderful shape. Thank you tremendously for that. Our goal here in adding our new teammates as well is to continually serve you better and better. We want to make sure we've got time to do both the research, more importantly, service you and make sure we're getting better for you as well. So with that, uh, we want to make sure that we can help you plan, live and give in retirement, but also, as Ken mentioned, they inherit and receive during retirement as well. With that, I want to sign off for this biweekly webinar. I appreciate your extra time today, and we will see you in two weeks, if not today, at the birthday lunch. Bye for now.